Who wear in England's called pants? Long ago, in a galaxy far, far away, the Star Wars saga began, and Kenner continues the excitement. Star Wars figure. The Empire Strikes Back returns with Jedi. Welcome to the Star Wars Collector's Archive podcast. It's the Collector's Cast. Newest news on the oldest toys, from bubble bath to belt buckles. 12 packs to 2 packs. New boss, alien bounty hunter. From the, from the, from the, from the, from the Star Wars collection. Watch out, watch out! We bring the world of vintage Star Wars memorabilia alive with informative features and personal collecting stories. Offer expires December 31st, 1979. No, no, no. And Octavito with Tempesco. The Supreme Master, the Emperor. Brought to you by the Star Wars Collector's Archive. The SWCA.com. With your hosts, Sky Payne, Steven Chewbacca, 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 and Stephen B. Deadly. Recorded live in front of a studio audience on the first day of Celebration 6, this is part one of the Kivecast Vintage Pods Convention Double Megacast. We should be talking about the Death Star droid, but we have too much else to say about getting lost in Orlando, late night sales, and our five least favorite toys. Tune in to our September issue to hear most of our normal features. But this month, we have a vintage vocab chat with Tommy Garvey about micro-collection 4-ups. We yak to Lee Bullock's face about 12-inch large-size action figures. They're not dolls. And we take a world tour with Joe Iglesias to explore what Turkey was like during the time of Uge. And as they say in the 501st, it's all about the wars. And Stephen B. Denley. I don't even know what that means. Wampa Wampa? Okay. Welcome to the Kivecast Vintage Pod Celebration 6 Edition. That's right, Celebration 6 Edition. I think it'll probably be our 31st episode about the Death Star droid. I see many people here, uh, so that's, that's pretty fun. Let's start with our movie thoughts, Steve. All right. And so I was thinking a lot about this Vintage Pod, because people have been like, are you guys changing the name and all that? And so my, my movie thought was about the Vintage Pod, and that is that part of the magic of Star Wars, it's just that one second. Where, where the pod leaves, and people in the audience can see me recreate it with the actual vintage pod. It, it's not that it shoots out. It's that it does that weird little cur- curly yeah, thing, yeah. the twisty thing. Like, that's just a little detail, right? Yeah. But that totally puts you in that exact moment. And, like, I don't know, you feel so real in yeah. that exact moment. So that's my vintage pod thought. <laughs> and if you think I thought of that on the way here, you're wrong. <laughs> I thought about it in the bathroom this morning. <laughs> So, yeah, so as, as to the Vintage Pod, uh, the, the show is not changing its name. Uh, the whole idea was that we're here at Celebration 6, and everybody who's watching us right here knows what a, what a Kive cast is, because they know what the archive is. But not everyone knows what a Kive is. <laughs> Most people think a Kive is a green onion, <laughs> particularly in England, apparently. So what we're trying to do is just introduce a sort of parallel title that is more ex- expiratory. Explicative? Yeah. Explanatory? Explanatory, that's the word. <laughs> a little expletive. So that's the whole idea behind the Vintage Pod. And it's pretty exciting, Steve. We have stickers. So there's, there's been lots of news. We have some people we're going to interview who are standing in front of us, staring at us as we speak. Oh, yep. <laughs> uh, so let's, uh, let's get to the news, Steve. All right. Watch out. It's Kenner's news. All right. Maybe I get closer to the mic. Can you guys hear Steve? I hope so. Yeah. Matias, can you hear Steve? Right. I just want to say I had to put the sound drop on. <laughs> when I say Matias, you say, ah, uh, Matias. Uh. Excellent. <laughs> uh, that was actually, you know, a, little, a lot of the show, too, is going to be about how different it was from C4 to C5, uh, C5 to C6. Yeah. That someone came up and said, I was so excited to meet Matias, but the first thing I thought of was the song. And I thought, we have truly done something wonderful and terrible. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, let's see. What's the show been for you, Steve? What have you been doing mostly? Driving around the city of Orlando? Not actually at the show. So. Yeah, that's where we spent most of our time. And uh, we're going to kind of recount the story. So, the archive party's tonight. Yep. And it's really exciting. We sold out all of our tickets. That's big news. Uh, except for a couple people here who are still thinking they're going to get a ticket. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so that's really crazy, and I think we have enough hot dogs and uh, chicken crispers. Mini burgers, anything like that? Mini burgers. Yeah. Uh, we have almost all the games set up. The Jawa bot bag is deflated. Yeah. So <laughs> you can't get your anger out that way. 
But uh, we have a pinata, so. Yeah, we have a vintage pinata. I'm filling it up with, you know, short mouth uh, biker scouts and stuff like that. So it, it'll be cool. Uh, but yeah, and, and the exclusives look amazing. We saw them. By the time you hear this, right, because, you know, you're going to hear this later, you're going to wish that you came to the party if you weren't here because yeah. the exclusives are that good. But we needed a hole punch, Steve. Because I broke it within five minutes. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, Steve, here's the hole punch, and he broke it. <laughs> so we look up Office Max, right? So, Steve, mm -hmm. how, how did you go about looking up Office Max? We looked up Office Max on Google Maps, and uh, so we found one that was five miles away, plug it into the, the GPS, and he's my co-pilot. We're driving. Yep. We start ending up in a business park. This yeah. doesn't look quite like Office Max. Yeah, and we're sitting there, you know, I'm supposed to be a good co-pilot because I love Chewbacca, but I'm actually not that good. I'll like stare at the iPhone, I'll get really nervous, and I'll be like, I, I don't know, it says stay on this road, should you turn right? But uh, we finally wound up finding it, and what was it, Steve? It was the Office Max corporate headquarters. And, <laughs> and if you've never been to Orlando, uh, first of all, congratulations, and second of all, it is a bad place to go to the wrong area. So we were just in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> and then we had to drive like, this Route 600 or some terrible road with all these Poyo places, and <laughs> we were stuck in traffic. And We basically spent about two and a half hours to get three hole punches, uh, yeah. <laughs> some tape, and uh, raffle tickets. So. Again, it wouldn't be the Cavcast if we didn't have to do it. No, but, but uh, there's, there's a good ending to that story. There's a good ending to it, which is we drove by a boba tea place, you know, the, the Korean tea where they have the little tapioca. You like, you like those, Steve, right? I do, yeah. Yeah, I love those. And the name of the place was Chewy Boba. And so we thought, this is a sign. We'll stop here. We'll take a picture at Chewy Boba. And then we go in, and they actually have a T-shirt of Chewbacca holding hands with, with Boba Fett. With Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah. And I mentioned that to the uh, Imperial Dignitary, the, the grand wizard of this whole uh, podcast, Gus Lopez. And the first thing he said was, do you have their address? <laughs> so... It's not too bad being in Orlando for, you know, three hours and having something that Gus wants. That's, that's pretty impressive. But, yeah, it's been awesome. Mostly it's been talking, though, Steve. A lot of talking. Yeah, yeah like that's what we're doing now. Yeah. That's what we did. Um, I want to talk, too, for anyone here who doesn't know much about the show and, and what the point of it is. I think it can be pretty well summed up by, like, we had these two conversations yesterday uh, with both from folks from Canada. Usually when people say Canada in the crowd, everyone from Canada starts cheering. <laughs> No? No? No Canadians? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, thank you, Tommy. Joy we all can share. So anyways, one of them was Elling, you know, who's a well-known collector, and he has a huge collection, and everyone knows who he is. And he was telling us how he loved the show because it was like hanging out with his friends, you know, like just like it was there, hanging out and talking. And I thought that was great. Part of me felt like, is this too much inside baseball? You know, are we too much like the insular vintage dudes talking about stuff with our friends. Right. And that's always the big fear. But then his friends showed up, also from Canada, Ryan and his, his buddy. I forget his buddy's name. Um, but uh, she's looking for an R2-D2 proof. So I hope she finds it while she's here. Yeah. Um, but anyways, and then he was, say, he was saying how he didn't, you know, he's sort of getting into the vintage collecting and he loves listening to it because he feels like he learns a lot and it's helping him get into collecting vintage. Right. So that's the whole point of the whole show, right? Steve? Yeah, no, it's vintage everywhere. So yeah, and uh, so that was that was a really nice moment. So for everyone who came up to us and said "Wampa Wampa," thank you. Yeah, because that's that's what that's what keeps the show going. And let's see what what else about the news, Steve. <clears throat> so uh, Celebration Six, you know, Celebration is known for staying up late. There was a huge sort of vintage find that was made, and a lot of it was for sale last night while I was sleeping next door. And uh, it's pretty cool. The stuff is now up for sale in the showroom, so we can talk about it, right? All of the weird vintage inner circle can nod their head. No one's going no. <laughs> no? Okay, good. Uh, and so what were they, Steve? Uh, we had a bunch of four-ups from the, the micro collection. A lot of vintage four-ups, just an insane amount. And uh, so it's really exciting. And I thought it would be a good idea to introduce the idea of what is a four-up and how does it actually work. And so... Uh, so far, we've determined that Tommy Garvey is the most knowledgeable about four-ups here. Joy we all can share. So everyone here, except for me, was at that sale. They saw this giant pile of micro-collection prototype four-ups, right? But the thing is, part of our show is always trying to get the vocab out there. So I'm going to put in the vintage vocab drop. Okay, I just did it. 
them folks change our vocabulary. Change our vocabulary. It's vintage. And Tommy's going to explain. What really is a four up? Why is it a four up? Why is it not a seven up? You know, that was a joke, everyone. You can laugh now. Well, with a micro, uh, you got to talk into the microphone. I am talking. Okay. The microphone. Thank <laughs> you. I'm here all night. The micro collection figures were actually sculpted at uh, four times the production size. So if you imagine like the, the production figures, they're only half an inch tall, but the 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 four ups, the, the original skull things were four times that size. So I mean, they're they're like six, seven inches tall. Right, because if, if you take like an actual micro figure, it's not much. You hold it in your hand, it's not too heavy. But these four ups are big. And are they made out of metal, like like the actual toys? They're, they're made out of resin, like a urethane. It's uh, okay. Dynacast or Carbolon. All right, so they're made out of. So they're not like super heavy then. Oh, they're pretty heavy. They're, yeah. They're very. They're a hard copy of the skulls. Okay, that's awesome. So. What else would people want to know, Steve? Well, uh, there's quite a few that were unproduced. Um, and, uh, I mean, the selection last night, that's, you know, the picture shows, we'll see it later. It's, it's pretty crazy. So, so what, what does that mean, unproduced? What was unproduced? None of them that were for sale were unproduced. Were they, Tommy? Uh, several of them were. The, really? Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the Luke Bacta, the Luke in his underwear there, that one's unproduced. And uh, the 3PO standing next to him with his arms outstretched, uh -huh. that one's unproduced. And uh, the Gamorrean Guard, that, one, that one's unproduced. And the, the Leia, the... The Leia that's done in black, that one, that one's like an altered, altered for up with an exaggerated chest. Oh, oh really? Yeah. <laughs> but the, the ruler, Very delicately said, Tommy. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, exaggerated. You should have seen his hand motions. <laughs> <laughs> supposedly, supposedly, Carrie Fisher was unhappy with the original sculpt and the, uh, the Kenner... The Kenner sculptors did that as like a, as a joke for themselves. Really? Can anyone confirm that? Is that true? That Tommy's not making that up. No one. Uh, awesome. And, and so the unproduced ones are probably more expensive, right? Are they like twice as much? Have like? Oh, uh, they're about twice as much. Yeah, maybe a little more. But uh, are, are they more rare? Some of them are. Yeah. Some of the some of the production ones are are very hard to find. They had a they had a Wamba. It's not in that picture, but that one's probably rarer than the. Yeah, that was beautiful. That, I saw that at the booth today, and that is just... I'm, Steve, did you see it? Yeah, it's, it's a, amazing. A lot of times, the, the the designers and the sculptors, they would keep the unproduced stuff because they just knew it was special. It's the, right. some of the production thing. You see that with, like, proof cards and right. unproduced stories. They just had that sense. Mm -hmm. That womp was sweet. Anyways. Yeah. All right, any other questions then for Tommy? We let him off the hook. How do you do, everybody? Yeah. Well, explain. Awesome. He's not our, our last uh, uh, guest. We would actually have more of a show planned, but the internet cost thirteen dollars. <laughs> and uh, you know, sure, I, you know, I, we spent hundreds of dollars on uh, little toys, but we're not going to spend. So well, question, just tight. Well, just tight. It's a question of principle, right? You know. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's pretty fun. For those of you who will be looking at the show notes in the future, we have our whole setup here, Steve. And this is cool because we haven't recorded a show in the same room for two years. For two years. Yeah. The yeah. last one was at Celebration 5. Yeah, that was the last show we ever recorded yeah. together. So we got together both of our Barneys. <laughs> that one fell over. Both of our one-legged, naked Han. And, uh, but we're going to talk more about that with Lee. We're going to be talking about 12-inch <laughs> figures pretty soon. And uh, all of our stickers. And also this, this uh, French cereal, which yep. was brought to us by Ollie. Ollie, Ollie uh, brought us quite a good selection yep. of stuff. He also brought some pastis, which I don't know if we're allowed to have in here, but we rebranded it. As vintage, anyways. Yeah. If you've ever spent any time in Marseille, you know that's good stuff. So that's the other reason that we love doing this, Steve, is free stuff. Free stuff everywhere. Yep. So anyone who's listening wants to come up and give us free stuff, uh, <laughs> you're, you're more than free. Dude. Everyone's land news are already full yeah. times two. So. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, I'd say that's been the big news so far. We're recording this at noon on Thursday. Right. So this is literally the first thing we could possibly do. Yep. And yet we've already had some major sales. We've already had some uh, crazy news. We got to see the Star Tots, yep. which again, by the time you're listening to this, you're going to wish that you uh, you had them all. 
Cavaliers. So line, uh, line for that first panel. Two hours early, it's still around the corner and down the hall. Really? So, Did it yeah. sell out? Or fill out? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I guess they're going to cut it off at some point. Yeah. How about you, Steve? Did you buy anything yet? Uh, let's see. What have I bought? Uh, it's great radio, Steve. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm not, I'm not good on the spot. Usually I have time to, to think about these things. Well, I got something from the store. You did. You, oh, you went to the store. I went to the store. And the main thing about the store is there's so much vintage out there. Yeah. And again, we talked about this really when we started it. When we started the show was when Kenner, uh, Kenner, Hasbro was reintroducing the vintage line. And we really had this feeling this is going to help the vintage hobby grow. Right. And I think it really has. And it, it seems like it really sells because uh, Kenner, I mean, has. Okay, if I call Hasbro Kenner one more time, you guys are allowed to come up and hit me. <laughs> um, or hit Steve. Uh, hit me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, like it's just exponential. Like now, when you go into the, the celebration store, you got the magnets that are based on the old ca uh, carrying cases. Oh, really? Yeah. You have a sort of recreation of the Ewoks and the backpacks. Right. And everything just has this real vintage feel. So it, it kind of continues. But I, I got a, a bottle opener, uh, a tiki theme oh, bottle opener. Oh, you want to get the tiki? With, uh, with Chewbacca. <laughs> but, uh, that was that was five dollars, well spent. <laughs> And, uh, and I got some cool masks. You did. Yeah, those things out. are pretty cool. Maybe we should talk about that on on, uh, on tomorrow's show, Sunday's okay. show. All right. Talk about. We have more people to interview, Steve. Yes, we do. So who should we interview? Should we interview Joe about turkey? Or should we interview Lee about 12-inch figures? Whoever wants to jump off the plane Judging first. by who has more tattoos, it would be like Joe. <laughs> like who has more sunglasses on their head, it would be a tie. <laughs> more. Let's go with Lee. Alright, come on up, Lee. Yaggity yak, yaggity yak, please. Yaggity yak, yaggity yak, please. Yak, yak, yak to my face. Yaggity yak! Don't know that. So, this is the thing is, we wanted to interview the 12 inch figure collector. Now, the first question is, Lee, are you the 12 inch vintage collector? Um, probably not, but uh, I did tr I'm trying. <laughs> okay, you're trying. Now, they're not dolls, right? They're not dolls. Okay, what, what do you call them instead of dolls? They're large size action figures. Okay. Large that's, size action figures. That's what's written on the box. No, not the word doll never appears on the box. Do you ever call them dolls? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do people come to visit your collection call them dolls? They do. Okay. They do. Okay. Now, before we get to the serious questions, it, uh, this has underwear. Was this painted on, or does... does the, I'm sorry, uh, in England we call them pants. Okay. <laughs> they do right. call them pants in yeah. England. Underwear in England is called pants. Yeah. So, is this painted on? I, I assume, yes. Um, I've often You've never taken off the clothes? I've, I have taken off the clothes. Okay. Yeah. The, right. um, it's, because this one doesn't have any underwear. Yeah, it's an interesting point. And this no one, one has no pants. No one actually <laughs> understands why the Ben Kenobi does actually have painted underwear, and the Luke and uh, Luke player and Han do not. So I did not know that. It's open to conjecture. Did you guys all know this? No. So no, the only know. vintage fig 12 large size action figures with underpants are Obi-Wan Kenobi it's and... Ju it's just, just Obi-Wan just Kenobi. Obi it's just him. I, also, the little lady um, Leia also has underpants okay. as well. That is really but, cool. Do huh. you think Alec Guinness had anything to do with it? I would suspect he probably did. Yeah, he might. <laughs> wow. He probably didn't like the idea of, uh, of sort of Images of himself walking around naked. Probably wouldn't kids, like this idea. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, <laughs> he probably wouldn't. <laughs> wow. All right. So we've gotten all the way inside of the figures. Let's kind of go to the outside. So, so how long have you been collecting uh, large size action dolls? Uh, dolls. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been uh, basically. I started collecting um, Star Wars vintage in 1989, and it was with the 12 inch figures. Okay. So, um, so yeah, since since 89. And it, it seems to me that like the large size action figures have always, at least when I was just looking up, like back in the old days, the, the Star Trek and collectibles book, like the first yeah. ever Star yeah. Wars, I remember looking, thinking, what's the most valuable Star Wars toy? Yeah. And it was always a 12 inch yeah. uh, IG-88, yeah. right? So was there a while when you started where it was like the thing to get was the was it the was, dolls? It was pretty much, um, I mean, you know, those who kind of remember the early days of uh, collecting vintage Star Wars, you know, sort of late eighties, early nineties. Right. Um, a lot of a lot of um, sort of three and three quarter inch production stuff was was pretty common. You could get hold of it. 
Right. Uh, but because the 12-inch figures were not particularly popular at the time mm. uh, when, when they first came out, and they didn't sell incredibly well, and you know, uh, sort of accessories can be lost, boxes were chucked. You know, you you, you found them quite difficult to find complete. Okay. And I think uh, the 12-inch figures were one of the first. Um, one of the first lines in the vintage line that, that actually took off and actually got some notice. And yeah. part, of, part of it was the IG, what makes the IG-88 special for this? Well, um, the IG-88 was actually only issued in America and it was at the tail end of the line. Um, there, it, there, is, there is some advertising that was done in, in uh, France okay. uh, for, uh, in, for some kind of Meccano Meccano advertising that features IG88, really? but there is no evidence that IG88 was ever released outside of America. So back in the early days of collecting vintage, particularly in the UK and elsewhere, um, before the internet, um, IG88 was quite a grail piece. It was a very tough piece to find. I imagine, yeah. 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 yeah, um, yeah. And so it took all, it took this kind of aura on board of being an incredibly rare piece and probably the rarest piece. It turns out that um, as as the dust has settled and international markets have opened up, you know, um, there are far rarer pieces. All right. So I mean, that so is it worth less now than it was then, or has it pretty much possibly. stayed? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, 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 I mean, at one time um, you would. I have seen boxed IG eighty eights in the UK in the mid nineties sell for six, seven, eight hundred pounds. Wow. And they would sell all the time at that. There wow. was, you know, these days, yeah. I mean, it, it, you, you're probably looking at about four hundred right. for, for for a nice one. So, okay. So, so IG88 was only in America. So, yeah. that's, how many licenses are there out there? So, if, so if you're trying to become a large size action doll collector, yeah. Or I guess a small doll large action figure collector. Yes. So, if you want to be the next Lee Bullock. How do, how do you do, like... You don't want that. No, you don't. You seem like a nice enough guy, right? You have a degree in physics, right? I do have a degree in Doctor physics, of physics. Have you done any physics experiments with your dolls? I have not done any physics experiments <laughs> with my large size action for this guy. <laughs> yeah, you drop one from the... Anyway, I don't know what you know, physics is. It's terrible. Uh, so, um, if you were to say, you know, I really want to get every... Let's just say Obi-Wan as an example. How many countries would you get? How hard would it be? Well, what would the, it look like? This is... This, this is uh, where it gets a little complicated because um, some some twelve-inch figures um, had very limited releases right. um, around around the world. Where the obvious ones, are Luke and Leia, are probably the two toughest figures to do a run of because pretty much every licensee that did twelve-inch figures, with the exception of Bassa, will have done a Luke and Leia. Okay. It's pretty much you know so uh, Takara, for instance, only produced two twelve-inch figures, and it was Luke and Leia. Clipper, really? Clipper, confirmed Clipper, 12-inch figures, even though there are rumours, uh, confirmed Clipper 12-inch figures are only Luke and Leia. And so, so, so then, yeah. in Holland and in Japan, they yeah. didn't make a Vader? No, it was... It was no just, Stormtrooper? Not confirmed. Not that's, confirmed. That's weird. So it's just Luke and Leia. Um, Palatoy in the UK, again, only Luke and Leia. But what's interesting about the UK 12-inch figures is that the actual production was split between two companies, um, and it was Dennis Fisher right. in Yorkshire, and it was Palatoy in Colville in Leicestershire. Um, Are those far apart? No, no, not by US standards. Okay. <laughs> well, nothing's far apart now. Yeah. 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 The moon is not far. Um, so you were looking, you were looking at that they split the production on the Luke and Leia, uh, where Dennis Fisher took the um, took the the six of the other twelve inch figures on board. Okay. Um, you will find that in terms of things like Jawa and Ben Kenobi, if you ever find uh, Jawa and Ben Kenobi in the UK, they're invariably uh, imports in the Kano boxes. Okay. Okay. So there was no UK box for Jawa and no UK box for, uh, for Ben Kenobi. Okay, but so then the only countries to make all of everything are what, Kenner Canada? United, uh, uh, well, Kenner Canada. Can Can Canada didn't have IG88. Okay. Uh, right. So. Um, in terms of the standard, standard set of 12, 12 characters, it is Kenner. Okay. Wow. It is just Kenner. Kenner. Yeah. yeah. It makes me feel kind of patriotic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then what's the, what's the, the story with the, the ESB line? Because I think a lot of people are interested in, you know, first of all, why didn't they make figures for the Empire yeah. line? And then as a collector, 
I mean, do you collect the Empire line as well? Well, I, I would like to. I, right. I would like to, but uh, the obviously um, the the Empire unproduced line is a very very difficult, you know, very difficult pieces to get hold of, very expensive pieces. Um, I tend to concentrate primarily on the international production okay. production okay. pieces. So you know, I, I collect the production pieces from all over the world. Um, the Empire Strikes Back line was was very was, was close to production. Uh, there are box flats out there. There, there are obviously um, there are obviously prototypes right. of the ES, ESB. Um, ESB costumes for Luke and Leia right. and Han, um, and uh, also um, Lando Calrissian was also uh, was also planned, and and a lot of early um, a lot of early uh, advertising. Uh, Lando Calrissian was a Hardy Boys doll, was a painted Hardy Boys doll, <laughs> and I, I actually also if you were to look at some of the um, some of the promotional material uh, early on for the 12-inch line. Han Solo was also a dressed up Hardy Boy style. So oh, that's cool. Was it a different Hardy Boy? Yeah, uh, yeah. I'd be, um, yeah. I mean, the um, there's two of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, when you know about Hardy Boy, there's two. I think I think Lando yeah. Calrissian was Parker Stevenson. Okay. So, um, so yeah, that's essentially uh, what, what what you found with that. And obviously, the sales were were not up to the same level as what the three and three quarter inch figures were because obviously they're very bulky. They had no, ex they had no kind of ships and accessories with them. So, right. you know, um, they kind of decided, and their affiliates decided to just go with what was uh, what was selling very now, well. Is for there them a the theory time. that like maybe that was most of the problem that they, they couldn't have any accessories with it? Well, it seems like they probably sold well enough to continue. If it weren't, I don't know. I think uh, I think I think the upshot uh, was that they probably wanted to invest more in. The three and three quarter inch line. line. Right. I think. I think. Uh, I think that was a, a sort of. It, it was a. It was. It was a safe bet, and right. I think that's probably what they went with. So yeah, the um, the the Empire Strikes Back line uh, was next. The only Empire Strikes Back dolls that were produced were uh, Boba Fett and IG eighty eight. Right. Right. Um, what about Australia? Australia, of <laughs> course. Now, case. this is uh, this well, is something. This, this is, is one of those questions where I, I'm embarrassed to like not just be asking for the audience, but I I really would like a straight and clear answer as to what is the deal with Australia. So be straight and clear. For no, once, nobody, Lee, nobody, you, nobody knows. <laughs> no one no, knows. Nobody knows for sure. Um, okay. The the Tall Toys ESB uh, Vader is significantly different. Than the box flat, right? Um, and um, Bill McBride, right? Bill McBride has, has we'll, highlighted we'll, this originally. Yeah, we'll put a link up um, on the show notes because yeah. that's a really great yeah. article all about. That. It's definitely worth having a look at Bill McBride's article on the ESB Vader. Right. It's pretty much definitive on all the differences. So we know for a fact that what was produced in Australia was what what was specifically produced for Australia. I mean, one of the things that that the one of the things that is different, for instance, is that the, the box flat mentions uh, the height of Vader as 15 inches because huh. they don't use inches in Australia. That right. was completely removed from the from the uh, from the contents description. Because yeah, that's like 4,000 centimeters. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty good at this stuff. I mean, yes. Yes. I don't know what planet Steve that's. Will, that's on. Later about the whole system. <laughs> it's like three hogsheads or 100 centimeters. It right. is. Yes. Uh, it is indeed. And, and then, what about the Chewbacca? Has there been any confusion well, on that? Well, the Chewbacca is. Um, Does same in the audience know? The, I remember at Celebration Three, seeing the Australian mm -hmm. Chewbacca walk right in front of me. Someone had it and they bought it. Well, no one in this room. I can t I can say, I can say that I have actually seen some evidence for a ESB Chewbacca that has store tape on it. Okay. That 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 has been taped. That's not a made-up box flat, and looks to be that it may have been at retail. Wow. So I have seen evidence. I have photographs of that at home. So it's uh, so it's, almost it's not um, it's, good. it's not hundred percent confirmed. But my suspicion is is that it probably did make production in in, in Australia. That's good. Well, between this and last month talking about Barca. I'm just well. There you <laughs> go. <these> dolls, <laughs> dolls. Expensive. And they're hard to ship, and they're hard to display. No, but they're just <laughs> awesome. Yeah, they are. And they are people just should awesome. collect them. They should. 
and I suppose it seems like it really means it at a low point now, do you think? Um, and it's going to go up? I, I, might, I actually think it's kind of gone past the low point. I'm actually seeing quite a few uh, collectors coming into, into right. the 12-inch figures end of things. And, um, and actually seeing that in terms of rarity, uh, right. If you want to try and collect all 65 international variants, right. um, that is a very tough task. Right. Very tough task. That actually leads us perfectly into our... Lightning round? Yes. I said a microphone now. Lightning round. So into the lightning round. Everyone's... Favorite or least favorite, depending on how much your name rhymes with Orgulius. It's a feature. <laughs> so, what is your holy grail then? Of oh, the 65, how many do you have? Lee? Oh dear. I have 31 as it stands at the moment. You have 31 out of 65? I have 31 out of 65 as it stands at the moment. I thought you had like 70 of the 65. That's right, I have 70 of the 65, <laughs> Sky. Yeah, wow. I'm going to get 31 as it stands at the moment. Okay, alright, so then if, if you, there's just one, right? If uh, Let's pick someone out of so If Jason West over here had in his bag the one figure that you wanted more than anything, what would it be? Oh, it would be, wouldn't it? Have you got it, Jason? <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> hey, if it's a jar one, you're right. That's yeah, it would probably would. Um, it, that's, a, that's a quite a tough one. I would, I would suspect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he pulled out a general giant uh, bust, so I, I don't think that quite counts. It's going to have to be um, a boxed Bassa Vader or boxed Bassa Chewbacca. It would have to be. Right. Um, the, yeah, so it would be one of them two. Okay, so a fairly new Holy Grail. Yeah, prior to that, it was probably an ESB Tall Toys Vader. Yeah, okay. yeah. In yes. terms of production. That's that would, that would be. Uh, if you would just, I'm going to rely on the audience. If there's any uh, lightning questions we forget to ask, I forget them every, except for the one question I like, I forget them every, every, every time. <laughs> Uh, so if your house was on fire then, in, where are you living in England again? Uh, Stoke on Trent. Stoke on Trent. That's yeah. where uh, Shakespeare's from, right? No, it isn't. <laughs> he's, he's on something upon something, right? Essex upon. That's Stratford upon Avon. That's right. There you go. I got the upon right. You got the upon right. There's lots of upon. Can I sound like a Delaware right? American? <laughs> this is great. Right. So you live on Stratford upon Essex? Yes, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Essex upon Dalton. Okay. Uh, so if, that, if if you did go up on fire in between rainstorms. What would you grab? Well, what would I grab? It would. Uh, can I grab an entire shelf? No. Oh. <laughs> Only one person tried that, and then we kicked it off the uh, the vintage pod forever. <laughs> that's uh, that's that's not nice. Uh, probably my Bass Evader. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you you lose Bass Evader. My lose Bass Evader. You have to. Did it come with a cape? Uh, mine has a cape. Yes. Okay. Mine has the saber. Cape. Uh, no, mine does not have the saber, ah. but uh, mine has the cape. Yeah. All right. Cool. And then, as always, my favorite question. If you, Lee Bullock, were not what you want to be, but if you were, so you have to self-reflection, not wish or comment. Okay. If you were a vintage Star Wars memorabilia item, which one would you be? It takes forever to answer this question. I'm We're still waiting for Joe's answer. It's been all over a year. I'm probably <laughs> utterly, because I'm utterly neurotic, C-3PO. Okay. <laughs> just, just a C-3PO? A, a, a doll C-3PO? Or? Um... Yeah, yeah, the 12 inch C3PO, I'd be perfectly, I think that reflects my <laughs> enemy. I don't think you're that neurotic. You don't come across as that neurotic. Oh, I am. Yeah, well, <laughs> plus, you know, he's like, you know, smart. And he probably knows about physics, too. Might get it. Awesome. Any of my questions you'd like me to ask? Oh, yeah. You say 4 or 4 m It's 4 m Thank you. Right. That's what I say, That's, right? Yeah. It's full on. Right. And obviously yeah. it's eighty eighty. Great. Yeah. All right. So let's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, I don't know when we'll hear this interview, but thank you. And, and thanks, Lee. This is cool for the audience because you get to see, like, this whole thing will be edited down to, like, three minutes. And you'll be hearing it when you're on your bicycle or mowing your lawn. And now you actually see how the whole thing happens. So it's pretty awesome yeah, well thank thanks, you very yeah. much is that's there anything else you'd like people to know about 12 inch figures no that's fine that's all, right. that's all good if anyone's got any questions about them I'm, I'm sure I can't answer them okay. <laughs> okay. cheers thank you goodbye alright awesome alright Seema where are we at now uh, we got like 20 minutes left okay sorry I asked all the questions it's alright right. you came up with them so. I'm, I'm so used to it because I usually do all the interviews you usually do it by yourself I get a different time and 
if we do the interviews together, then like the phone will ring and they gotta be like, hello, and then we'll both say hello at the same yeah, time, yeah. and then they never know when I'm recording, and they get mad at me. <laughs> you get awkward silence. You get awkward so. silence, yeah. You get to start recording after you call back. That too. Yeah. That, that happened once. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, let's actually have a, 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 a world tour, Steve, then. Okay. This is something we'll be able to record later. Uh, he's not technically from Turkey, but I believe he was granted ambassadorial rights. Yeah, I was going to say, he is the ambassador of Turkey. I believe world. at some point. Um, I don't know what a last name would sound like. I don't think... Iglesias is not uh, Turkish last name. Spanish. Spanish. Right, right, yeah. you know. I don't know what... Joe. Let's, let's bring let's Joe let's up bring here. Joe. All right. Oh, I'm afraid Joe McDermott. J'ai bien... The deflector shield. El escudo deflector. L'écran de protection will be quite operational when your tummy is alright. So from the outer realm. In person for the first time, not from his uh, shop or whatever. It's not a brick through his window, it's a brick through his face. I don't know, that's a little harsh. But... <laughs> that's a little harsh. Uh, <laughs> no, <it's not> friends, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. All right, so, so what do you know about, like, what was it actually like in Turkey? In the, like, what was on the stores? When did these things come out? How did people get them? What was it like? Well, um, me and Keen, who I've been talking to a lot about the Jose article of revamp that I'm doing for the Outer Realm, um, has told me a lot about how the regular department stores did have licensed figures, but they were just ridiculously priced. Uh, uh, did you have any idea, like, the relationship of price of Uze to licensed figures? About three times the price. Three times the price. Wow. Uh, and, and is there evidence of actual production figures in Turkey? Um, the fact that people from Turkey, that when they come with loose collections, there'll be a couple of Uze's mixed in with licensed figures. And these people didn't leave Turkey until they were in their late teens, and they had these as their childhood toys. Oh, okay, and was it just like where they take American figures and just put a sticker on them? Or is there any indication of the any, what, any packaging variation at all? No indication of any packaging variation. It was more than likely, you know, European figures brought in, imported. Yeah. Right. Huh. All right, so then they actually had them, and they sold them. But then, so Uze's weren't sold in department stores? Um, according to me, they were sold more in like smaller market places and like little bodegas and stuff like that. And were they concurrent with with the, the actual licensed stuff? Um, 88, 87, 88, 89 era is when Uzes were around and licensed figures were around like Tale of Jedi 84 to around 89 as well in, in Turkey from what, what I've been told. Okay, so there may have been a little bit of crossover. But... Well, they were both in the stores at the same time for the most part and... They were still on the shelves until the early 90s. Right. And then how, how did it come about that they really made their way here? See, yeah, you have any questions? Yeah, yeah that was, that was, I wanted to know how... Why don't you ask here. it so it sounds better than here. <laughs> so how did the uh, Discovery of Blues Days make it to collectors over in the U.S.? Uh, well, there were two collectors. There was uh, Lenny Lee, who owns uh, Lee's Action Figure News, right. and uh, Israel Levesque from Toy Tokyo. Okay. They went overseas to, on a buying trip, to, and they bought... Tons of Uzes in Turkey. They bought tons of Polish carded. Um, when they pulled them, they brought back tons of Hungarian carded figures. They basically just went on a bootleg world tour and cleaned out. They literally cleaned out the um, SB Products factory in Istanbul. Wow, that's And they brought back probably about the equivalent of like five comic book long boxes full of carded Uzes. And in that, there were two carded headmen and a bunch of everything else. Okay. And so when was that? Um, that was in the early 90s. That was around 92, uh, from what Levis told me. Huh. So then that's, that's been pretty much the main influx. Has there been, uh, like, secondary waves or tertiary there been, waves? There have, of course, been more that have turned up from sources in Turkey. Yeah. But the bulk of the Uzes that ha you know, are in U.S. collections came, whether it be directly or via being resold and resold and resold, right. from that initial that find. Initial migration. Yeah. Right. And loose, also loose Uzes and sometimes carded Uzes. Somehow turn up uh, in Germany with some frequency. Um, that has been attributed to the fact that there was a migration of uh, folks from Turkey into Germany around oh. that same time frame. Okay. So that's you know also shows where those you know came with the children as they moved. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it when you can see like actual migrations of human beings through toys. <laughs> like, it tells a story because I mean, there's a lot of like great German movies all about the relationship between the people moving in from Turkey and living in Germany. It's like a whole real social question. And you can see it right there, you know, with the 
with the headman shield. <laughs> but, uh, if only another one of those would come on the market. Yeah. <laughs> Feeding Frenzy would be great to watch. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I also want to try and be careful not to get too much into your actual bootleg panel, right? So that's what I was trying well, to think about. Well, these people like, aren't going to be, you know, the people that are not, you know, sitting in the room aren't going to be able to enjoy the panel, so we might as well give them a little. And in your dealings with, with folks in Turkey, I mean, is there, do they, is there a lot of nostalgia for Star Wars? Or I mean, I know there's the, the video, right, of Turkey, the weird Turkish oh, the, the, movie. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's just hilarious. How, do, how can we describe this movie if people haven't seen it? So, Star Wars on crack? But not so, even crack. It's, no, it's something worse than that. I, I <laughs> think crack would produce something like cohesive. This Star Wars on crystal meth? Maybe. Maybe that, that might be, yeah. Because yeah. it's a movie. I don't think, know if you can find it online, but it's like uh, they would film actors in like Buck Rogers costumes standing in front of a rear projection yeah. Yeah. of Star Wars as it was happening. As a matter of fact, with the vintage pod, I remember that was yeah, it. Yeah, the, right. right on the twirl, the little twirl that yeah, I saw. Yeah, add old Star Wars with Rocky Horror Picture Show, and then you might have uh, some idea of it with that worst costuming. Right. So did, did that, do you know, did that exist at the same time as the movie? Um, what year did that movie come out? That movie was... I have no idea. I'd have to look it up. I, I've never talked to anyone about that movie in relationship to the figures, so I'm not sure uh, where that fits into the... Because what if Uze things. was really not a Star Wars figure, but figures for that movie, Joe? I don't believe so. <laughs> I see this right here is Star Wars. Well, no, that movie was called Star Wars. Star Wars, yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. I, I got a new theory. I'm going to run with it until... Uh, until the, proven otherwise? Yeah, yeah, until the hour ends. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So is it, there's not a lot of nostalgia? There's a lot of people collecting? There are some people that remember having them and they enjoyed having them. Uh, that's actually, once again, back to uh, me, if I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. It's spelled M-E-T-A. I don't know how it's pronounced. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing it correctly. But he found his childhood figures. His mom sent them over to him. And he showed up on one of the online forums and was asked what they were, and that got him sparked into collecting them, and now, maybe a year and a half in, he's pretty close to a full set of loser wow. days. Wow, that's awesome. Well, by some strange coincidence, right as I got home from Celebration 6, I got this email from Neil in my mailbox here at the Wampa Studios. He actually was, uh, he was explaining how his father was in the Air Force while he was a kid, and his family was stationed in Turkey during the late 1980s. He says, quote, I can still remember walking into a Turkish toy store or off base and seeing all these crazy bootleg figures on the racks. I'm not sure why I didn't beg and plead for my father to buy one, some or all of them, like I do for every other toy I saw in the store and wanted, but I definitely regret it now. Though I was heavily into Star Wars figures in the early 80s, I have to imagine by the time I encountered Uge, Star Wars figures had pretty much disappeared off shelves and had become infatuated with G.I. Joe. So I'm guessing they just didn't appeal to me at the time, and it seemed like nothing more than a poor quality ripoff which you could not show up with on the playground. I mean, I, they couldn't even get the colors right, and I was trying to, pa trying to pass off a calculator for a computer. Come on! That's what he remembers. He remembers thinking that. He remembers thinking they're trying to pass off a calculator as a computer. That's funny. Uh, and then he says, quote, Somehow we did end up buying one of the vehicles, perhaps G to put G.I. Joe's in. It was a white tank with two guns on the front and a bubble dome. So production definitely started on Uze figures in the 1980s. Where's my time machine? So thank you, Neil, known as Shinobi One. It's pretty cool to think of you uh, actually being back in Turkey and thinking, man, that calculator is lame. All right, let's get back to Celebration 6 coverage. Awesome, cool, Joe. Well, I think we're going to sort of end it there so we can kind of do our wrap-up because I think there's going to be a lot of people coming in here to get patches soon. Yes, that's going to get awfully awkward. And have our show, and all you hear, you get a free patch. There's a free patch over there. Um, as it is, I think most people here are gonna be mad they're not getting tots, but uh, you can get thicker. So let's have a round of applause for Joe Iglesias. <laughs> all right, Steve. What do we got left for this? For this block? What do we have left? We don't have that much left for this. I, I think we do want to do our, our top five least favorite figures. Yeah. So we're just gonna go back and forth and kind of give our reasoning as to why are they our least favorite. So, Steve, why don't you start? What is your fifth least favorite figure? I'm going to start with Lumat. You know? Lumat? Yeah. Which one's he? He's the, uh, one of the Ewoks. I know he's yeah. an Ewok. Yeah, the most, to me, he's the most uninteresting one. I that, that could be. He always reminds me of, like, Grumpy from Snow White and the Seven Doors. Okay. Or he would be Grumpy, because he just looks really upset. And, right. Uh, he, I don't know. He's the least engaging of Oh, he's Ewoks. the purple one, right? The, the, the card back is all purple? Yeah. Lumat? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, so I'd say my least, my fifth least favorite is the Han Carbonite figure. Okay. Not the Carbonite. Not the, the, yeah. That stupid neck. He does have a, yeah. It's, he just looks like, <laughs> anyone else agree with me or everyone love that figure? John loves that figure. No? No, okay. <laughs> Five minutes left. Okay, Steve. We're going to have to do this quick. Right, we'll do it real quick. All right, uh, my number four, we'll go with me, we'll do snaking, uh, okay. is the small head Han. Oh. Because uh, being a, an American with a uh, cranial condition of largeness, I've always <laughs> loved the fact that there was the large head hung. And so I personally love that because those of us who have large heads, we bear Im immense neck trouble and our life is, is terrible. And finally someone can have our plight. So I don't like the small head because it makes me feel bad about myself. What about right, you, Steve? So number four for me would be our, our figure of the month that we've not mentioned, the Death Star droid. The Death Star droid? Yeah. So he, Fourth his, least favorite? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's just, he's a falsehood to me, because he's not really a Death Star droid. That's true. He's a Sandcrawler droid. He's a Sandcrawler droid. droid. And uh, I don't know. I guess... Wait a minute. Why didn't they call him a Sandcrawler droid? They sold the Sandcrawler. They sold the Sandcrawler. And the Death Star... Was, was, that, was that earlier or later? Hey, this is great having the audience here. Number three was Flat Skip for me. Oh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of a... A running joke I'm going to say because I love all the Java figures, but that's one of the ones I didn't have. So I, for some reason, I, I just I gotta let them go. Uh, right. Anyone mad at Steve for that? Flat two skip, no one. All right. No. Okay. My third least favorite is removable limbs three PO. Oh. Because anything that can be lost in the pain household is lost. So I have like many solid torso three POs from my childhood. That's true. Yeah. Even now, I, I I hate that you can't just keep it together. Yeah. Number two is one of your favorites, Steve. Right. I hate Reeves. <laughs> I hate his stupid eyes. I hate his stupid mouth. Oh, come on. I, I hate him. <laughs> Lee, you like Reeves? He agrees. <laughs> Lee agrees. <laughs> Excellent. What's your number two? Right. My number two would be the Ugna. He's, he's uh, unbecoming, ugly, and unlikable. That's, I, I don't know. I, not, not a fan. Yeah, no, Ugna. I, I forgot about Ugna. He should have been on there. <laughs> uh, speaking of purple. All right, Steve, what is your least favorite Star Wars figure of all time? And this really pains me to say it, but uh, I have to go Rancor Keeper because Rancor Keeper. I had him as a kid, and I was always really sympathetic for him. And he now he kind of reminds me of uh, Jerry from Parks and Recreation. I don't know if any of you guys watch that show. Where he oh, just yeah. always gets, and he's always there. And he just like, got picked on all the time. He just gets the shaft all the time. So. He does. But no, I have to be Rancor Keeper. Wow. And I'm staying in job, and I'm going to Big Fortuna. Uh, because when I was a kid, that was one of the few toys I, I like. I got off the shelves, and he always scared me. Those little <laughs> tentacles scare me. His little sharp teeth, his little da -ba -da -da -ba and all that. Oh, no good, Steve. All right. All right. That was a little bit rushed, but we only right. five minutes left. So if you'd like to hear more of the uh, Cadcast Vintage Pod here at Celebration Six, come join us Saturday at four o'clock. Yep. It's our second block. Saturday. That's our second. It's four o'clock, right? Steve. Four o'clock Saturday. Yeah. Excellent. If you'd like some stickers, come here. And tonight is going to be the party, yep. and it's going to be really right. awesome. And we will not be recording it like this, so we'll be up to talk like natural human beings, Steve. That's right. All right. Wampa Wampa. Adios. Let's see if I was recording. That'll do it for now, Space Freaks. Tune in next month to hear all your favorite features, like Nugget from the Archive and Unloved Item of the Month. We even talk about the Death Star droid. We're going to feature interviews with Jason and Andy. And we're going to talk a lot about the room sales, the archive party, and everything that went on during Celebration 6. We'll even include live audio from the floor of the room sales. It's exciting, it's happening, and I'm going to edit it next month on the Kivecast Vintage Pod. Vintage Pod. Vintage Pod. Kivecast. This podcast is not endorsed by Lucasfilm Limited, Hasbro Toys, or 20th Century Fox. It is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. The official Star Wars site can be found at www.starwars.com. The official Hasbro site can be found at www.hasbro.com. Star Wars all names and sounds of Star Wars characters and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or the respective copyright and trademark holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Star Wars Collector's Archive, unless otherwise indicated.